In this video I want to talk about this homemade Magnetron vacuum tube that I built. The title probably suggests it already. This tube is not working. I probably call this part one or attempt one or whatever. And in the next video I'm going to try this again. But nevertheless I want to talk about it since I have not uploaded for a long while and I had to delete the last video if you noticed. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to make a short video about this project and then next video I hopefully have a working magnetron to show and to try out some stuff with it. So I think uh, you guys know what a magnetron is. I kind of expect that if you're interested in electronics and stuff, but I'm just going to quickly talk about it because this is a little bit different than a normal magnetron and usually a magnetron is used in a microwave to create the microwaves and I have one here. I removed all the heat sinks and magnets and whatever and I cut the tube open so we can see inside and a normal magnetron has this antenna here. I covered this up because the ceramic on there um, is toxic if it gets chipped or something so it's important to cover these up but yeah this is the antenna nothing too interesting this right here is the the filament so the the cathode and if you look inside of this you have here this these cavities and this is called a cavity magnetron and it works by having the filament in the middle like this and it's going to emit electrons and these electrons want to go from the cathode to the anode but there are two magnets in here one here and one on the other side and this will cause the electrons to circle instead of just get going from the uh, cathode straight to the anode and by circling it, it kind of creates a circling wave that's going across these cavities and this is how the microwaves in a cavity magnetron are generated. That's just a really short explanation. And I was contemplating if I built a magnetron like this. The problem is the tubes I have, I usually uh, use like something like test tubes these are pretty easily accessible from ebay or something to build vacuum tubes and i have some other tubes that are bigger but the diameter of this thing is already much bigger than than what i usually build and this is already like what 2.45 gigahertz or something like that and this is a very high frequency and if i make this smaller make build something like this and make it smaller I have an even higher frequency and maybe that's something I could try as well at some point but I would like to have a lower frequency especially because I can then detect it easy, easier so I used another design and this is this thing right here and this is a slightly different design and it's pretty much the same from the only or only two videos on YouTube that also covers uh, the topic of making a magnetron yourself. And this is a so-called split anode magnetron. And the channel who made this before is uh, Glasslinger. And this is a different design than the cavity magnetron. And this works by having the anode basically have a circle and it's basically split. So we have a split anode, so split anode magnetron. And here the microwaves are created somewhat similar. The magnets will be placed down here and up here. So a magnetic field will go like this and 
same as the cavity magnetron, the electrons will spin around. And this spinning around will create uh, some fluctuation or, or, or oscillation between these two electrodes. And by placing a inductor here, you can actually tune this thing. And that's a benefit because A has a lower frequency and B, you can uh, change this frequency by changing the inductance there. So it's basically an LC circuit as well. And this is actually pretty simple in construction. You have here the contacts for the filament. So the filament is going through these two anodes. And I have a titanium getter that gets heated. So you have basically three wires, two for the filament and one for the uh, titanium getter that's connected to one of the filament sides. So I don't have to put in an extra wire for that. And the split anode, I made this out of some stainless steel tubing, spot welded this onto these contacts. And that's basically it. It's not that complicated. I don't know how complicated it will be to get this to work if I keep vacuum in a tube like this, but we will see. And what I'm what I also tried is coating the cathode, so the filament, with some barium. So if you coat this in barium nitrate and decompose it by heating this in the vacuum, it will turn into barium oxide and this will cause the so-called work function to be lower and it will cause more to, to emit more electrons out of this cathode at a lower temperature. And this that's obviously very good because then you don't have to heat up the filament that hot to get enough emission current. And this will be very good for the longevity and the lifetime of the tube. However, this didn't work either. Uh, it's very fragile. I just put some barium nitrate solution on there, let it dry. And I kind of overlooked the fact that I had to squeeze the filament a bit to get it in there because the tube is a bit uh, wider here. And I squeezed this in and the coating flaked off basically. And now there's a little bit of barium here and I think there's not a lot of barium on the filament. But yeah, I have to find a method to get this on there and get this to stay on there. Another problem with barium is if you convert this to barium oxide, you cannot expose it to air because the barium oxide will react with the moisture in the air and it will turn to barium hydroxide. And I heard this is bad for the tube or bad for the emission. So yeah, that's a problem with the barium. So I tried to find an alternative and this is yttrium and yttrium oxide is stable and I can just put it on there and don't have to worry about if it reacts with the air or something. So I'm going to try that. Uh, one problem probably is still that I have to get this to stick on there and not just loosely be on the filament because then it's easy to flake off from vibration or just handling the tube. So, I'm, so I have to find that out in the next version. What I also tried, and I wasted a lot of time with this, Usually I make the vacuum tight connection with tungsten and borosilicate glass. That's how it's usually done and other people on YouTube make it as well. And how I do it is I seal this in, in a small piece of glass, look at it, see if it's okay, if it looks okay, and then continue making the tube from these smaller wires. And this has the usually the benefit that I can look at it, see if it looks good, and then can decide if I put this into the tube. And other people on YouTube who make vacuum tubes make it 
different. They seal in the wires directly into the vacuum tube stem. And I tried figuring out how to do this. Actually, for a long time, I tried in the beginning as well uh, to seal them indirectly. And I thought I succeeded with that. Uh, it's hard to see on the camera, but I can insert a picture right here from, from this seal. And it looks okay, but this tube didn't seal as well. Um, so that's that's a failure, and I don't know how to do this better. The problem with that is you do not know if the vacuum is actually holding in there unless you actually build the tube, seal it off, and see if the pressure is rising or the tube is failing. And if you want to figure this out before you actually put together all of this, you need expensive equipment, a helium helium leak detector. And that's pretty expensive and I cannot afford this. So I'm basically stuck with just sealing the tube and hoping that it stays sealed and doesn't leak air inside. So I guess the only way to continue is build another tube. And then hopefully next video I will have a working magnetron that I can show off and experiment around a bit. So I will get to work and until next time. <laughs>